who knows what the future holds? Well, unless you've been asleep at the wheel for the past six months, you know that the real estate environment is drastically different than it was a year ago, two years ago, man, even six months ago. You are losing or bleeding money every month in holding costs. You have overspent on your renovation, can't find a buyer to pay what you need them to pay. You may have to sell this thing at a loss and then cover your losses out of your own pocket because there's no other exit. If you're trying to get into real estate and you're trying to decide what the best strategy is for you or what strategies you should avoid in 2023, stick around because I'm going to show you exactly what strategies I would avoid in 2023. What's going on, everybody? Henry Washington here from Bigger Pockets. Thank you so much for being here. As always, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. If you like content like this, please give us a like and subscribe to this channel so we can keep providing you this kind of value. All right, first on the list, we're gonna start off with the thing that everybody probably has on their mind, so let's address it from Jump Street. Short-term rentals. So we're talking vacation rentals, Airbnb, VRBO, right? People coming to vacation and take a short stay at your property. I don't think short-term rentals are a bad investment. Short-term rentals, done the way it's been done over the past real estate boom cycle is probably a little more risky. What I mean by that is there's a lot of people that got into the short-term rental space because they saw the quick escalated profits you could get by throwing some furniture in a place and sticking it on Airbnb. Now, what that's done is it's created a lot of competition. So the competition is increasing in the vacation rental space. If there's more options for people to choose from, it's naturally gonna drive pricing down because people need to lower prices to compete. And if pricing goes down, that model doesn't become as lucrative as it was in the past. So when I say, Airbnb is a strategy to avoid in 2023, I don't mean Airbnb done right and done well. I mean Airbnb just because you think you're going to make more money than a long-term rental. The competition in the space is actually a good thing because it's going to eliminate a lot of the players who weren't there to truly provide great vacation rental experiences for people. Gone are the days of just grabbing a place and throwing some paint on the walls, throwing some Ikea furniture in it, and expecting it to give you a very high return. That kind of vacation rental operator is not what I think will succeed in 2023. I think the vacation rental operators that succeed in 2023 are the ones who are very diligent about their due diligence, the ones who are very smart about the experience that they provide to others, the ones who are also very good at marketing. All right, next on the list of strategies I'd avoid in 2023 are luxury house flips. And there are several things that are keeping me from pursuing this as a strategy in 2023. And so I'm gonna go in order of the process of flipping a house. So the first is it's hard to find money to purchase these properties. A lot of lenders, both hard money lenders and traditional banks, understand that this is a more risky investment in 2023 because of the market conditions right now. Another reason that I would avoid luxury house flips is the high acquisition cost, right? It costs a lot to even get into these properties, right? What's great about this current market cycle is that there are tons of buying opportunities out there because there are lots of sellers who still need to sell and are having trouble selling, which creates an opportunity for investors to come in and get properties at a deeper discount, which means having cash on hand or buying power to be able to buy some of these great deals that are out there is of benefit to you. So if you spend a lot of your capital on a down payment for a luxury house flip, you are taking that buying power out of your pocket. Another reason I feel like you should be very careful about luxury house flips is it takes a whole lot longer to sell them. Average days on market for a, let's call it a first time home buyer type house, is typically going to be shorter than the average days on market for a more expensive luxury property. That's because the interest rates cause that mortgage payment to be very expensive. 
If you look at that same $1.25 million house and you're paying an 8% interest rate, your monthly mortgage payment is somewhere around $9,000 a month, right? So not everybody can afford that type of payment now. And so there's less buyers. Typically with a luxury house flip, there's only one exit. You have to sell it as a flip in order for you to get the return on the investment that you're making. It's very difficult to take a very large luxury house and monetize it in any other way other than maybe a short-term rental. And so if you get into a situation where you are losing or bleeding money every month in holding costs, you have overspent on your renovation and you can't find a buyer to pay what you need them to pay, you may have to sell this thing at a loss and then cover your losses out of your own pocket because there's no other exit. So I just think it's a bit risky, especially for new investors. Now, I will say that it can be done in 2023 if it's done correctly. And the way to do it correctly is you have to buy at such a deep discount that your profit margins are so wide that if you have to do price reductions in order to sell your property that you can afford to do those and still sell the property at a point where you're going to make a profit. And the third and final strategy I would think about avoiding in 2023 is large scale multifamily or large scale commercial real estate. Now, uh, before you go, before you go getting all mad at me and saying, Henry, Multifamily is a great investment. I agree with you. I don't necessarily think there's a strategy to completely avoid for 2023. I just think if you hold off a little while, I think there are some great opportunities coming in the large scale multifamily space. So when we say large scale multifamily, we're talking 100 plus units, right? So these are big properties. When the market was super hot and interest rates were very low and buyer demand was very high, you saw a lot of apartment syndicators, apartment operators, buying large scale multifamily properties, and they were underwriting them at that high market numbers, assuming performance based on what that current market condition was doing. Now we all know those market conditions have changed and there's a lot of these people who paid very large amounts for these properties because demand was high. And also a lot of the loans that were used to buy these properties were adjustable rates, uh, short term adjustable rate loans, which means as those loans come due, the banks may not want to keep these underperforming properties on their books, which means they may not redo another loan for these operators. And so what does that mean? They either have to give that property back or they have to find money from somewhere else. And I think you could see a lot of opportunity where banks have either taken back these properties or are uh, allowing new operators to come in and uh, assume these loans uh, at the lower interest rates who are going to be able to operate them within the current market climate. You can find me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. Thank you so, so much for being here. And as always, I'll see you at the closing table.